Hello everyone, this is Jonathan Matos from GraphicallyChristian.com. I am a cartoonist, a comic book writer, a graphic designer, a blogger, all sorts of different things. Uh, and a few weeks ago I started a series called uh, Content Aware, where I was going to post a video about uh, a certain type of genre of movie and explain all the different things in that genre that I experienced. And it was just kind of dry, it, and it didn't really showcase what you would find on graphicallychristian.com. Uh, so I decided to change things up a bit, and since we are a Christian website, I thought, you know, I, I want to get the word out there. I want to show people um, what it's like to be a Christian, and one big part of that is doing devotions every day. Um, and so I was reading through my devotions, and I was sort of seeing, like, what, as a Christian cartoonist, um, that is like? What thoughts are going through my head? And uh, one big thing is that I like to um, picture things more as a drama. And um, there's all these like images that float through my head. And as, as I was reading this passage in Second Kings, I noticed myself picturing um, some of the imagery from the Despicable Me series. And uh, that kind of caught me off guard because um, it, it's coming out soon, the Minions movie. Uh, and so I decided, hey, let's do a fan art of Minions while reading this story. And so as I begin this reading, it's from 2 Kings 9, 14 to uh, chapter 10, verse 31. And the first verse says, So Jehu, son of Jehoshaphat, the son of Nimshi, conspired against Joram. And so, uh, you know, starting off with this uh, conspiracy, you know, I pictured some kind of, like, dastardly villain. And that's what kind of colored the rest of my reading. Um, and so, as you can see, he's conspiring, uh, Jehu is conspiring against this other king. Um, but if you're reading this out of context, kind of like I was, I wasn't really keeping up with my reading of the Old Testament at this point. Um, he has a reason for conspiring against this other king, and so uh, you'll start seeing that as the story progresses. It says, Now Joram and all Israel had been defending Ramoth Gilead against Haziel, king of Aram. So Jehu is after Joram, who is defending Israel against uh, Haziel. But King Joram had returned to Jezreel to recover from the wounds. The Ara Arameans had inflicted on him in the battle of with Hezreel, king of Aram. So he is at Jezreel, just look at his wounds, and he's worried about uh, Jehu finding him. And Jehu said, If you desire to make me king, don't let anyone slip out of the city to go and tell the news in Jezreel. So he doesn't want uh, Joram to know where he is, that he's after him. Then he got into his chariot and rode to Jezreel, because Joram was resting there, and Ahaziah, king of Judah, had gone down to see him. So now Jehu, Joram, and Ahaziah are all in the same place. When the lookout stood standing on the tower in Jezreel saw Jehu's troops approaching, he called out, I see some troops coming. Get a horseman, Joram ordered. Send him to meet them and ask, Do you come in peace? The horseman rode off to meet Jehu and said, This is what the king said. You come in peace? What do you have to do with peace? Jehu replied. Fall in behind me. The lookout reported, This messenger has reached them, but he isn't coming back. So the king sent out a second horseman. When he came to them, he said, This is what the king says. You come in peace. Jehu replied, What do you have to do with peace? Fall in behind me. The lookout reported, he has reached them, but he isn't coming back either. The driving is like that of Jehu, the son of Nimshi. He drives like a maniac. Now at this point, I'm like, this is getting pretty good. This guy, he's a maniac. He wants some blood. Let's do this. Hitch up my chariot, Joram ordered. And when he was hitched up, Joram, king of Israel, and Jehaziah, king of Judah, rode out, each in his own chariot, to meet Jehu. They met him at the plot of ground that had belonged to Naboth the Jezreelite. Now, I had recently read that Naboth was the guy that Ahab stole 
his uh, his vineyard. And so I'm like, wow, like this is a historic like area that they're meeting at. It represents the things that Ahab did. So I started wondering, you know, is this like some old score that Jehu was settling here? And so I, I got kind of kind of a little too excited uh, to say the least. When Joram saw Jehu, he asked, "Have you come in peace, Jehu?" How can there be peace, Jehu replied, as long as all the idolatry and witchcraft of your mother Jezebel abound. Okay, <laughs> tension's getting pretty high here. Uh, Joram turned about and fled, calling out to Ahaziah, Treachery, Ahaziah! Then Jehu drew his bow, shot Joram between the shoulders. Ouch. Then <laughs> the arrow fleet pierced his heart, and he slumped down in his chariot. Jehu saw Bidkar. His chariot officer pick him up and throw him on the field that belonged to Naboth the Jezreelite. Remember how you and I were riding together in chariots behind Ahab his father when the Lord spoke this prophecy against him. Yesterday I saw the blood of Naboth and the blood of his son, declares the Lord, and I will surely make you pay for it on this plot of ground, declares the Lord. Now then, pick him up and throw him on the plot in accordance with the law of the Lord. When Ahaziah king of Judah saw what had happened, he flew up that road to Beth Hagan. Jehu chased him, shouting, Kill him too. They well wounded him in his chariot on the way up to Gur near Iblium. But he escaped to Megiddo and died there. His servants took him by chariot to Jerusalem and buried him with his ancestors in his tomb in the city of David. In the eleventh year of Joram, son of Ahab, Ahaziah had become king of Judah. So I was totally right. It was a score that Jehu was settling about Ahab, and it just it made me excited to read more. Unfortunately, I wish I could read more. There's much more craziness and bloodshed and injury, but, you know, with this being the first video, kind of underestimated how long it would take to read the whole passage. But I hope you guys enjoy this show, this format. Those of you who... Um, you know, enjoy dramatic Bible reading, or, you know, this version I'm doing of it where, you know, it's going to sort of tell you the uh, mental process I'm going through as I'm reading. And I hope those of you who like sweet art or, you know, drawing, coloring videos enjoy this as well. I was using uh, GIMP, uh, the Photoshop Life 3 software, you know, for the last portion of the video. Please leave any questions or suggestions in the comments below. Peace, love, and God bless everybody. Thanks for watching.